Hi, this is Robert Green. I'm the host of Visual Studio Toolbox. You know, I've been doing this show for quite some time. The first episode that I have up on the screen here was May 2011, and we're on pretty close to our 150th show. And you know, I've done all of them myself with one exception. Uh, Seth Juarez once came on and co-hosted. Um, that worked fine. And I decided recently that, yes, I'm obviously going to continue doing the show, um, but that I would uh, let some others have some of the fun. And so I've decided to ask a few people to co-host the show every now and again. Dimitri Leyland, who's going to do the episode you're going to see next, uh, is going to do a bunch of episodes. Donovan Brown's going to do some of the ALM and DevOps stuff. And we'll see who else may show up as a co-host in the future. So just to let you know that the show goes on, I'll still be the main host. I'll still be doing most of them. But we're going to have some additional co-hosts. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. So today's episode will be Dimitri Leyland as the co-host, and I will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey, and welcome to an episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. My name is Dimitri Leyland, and then, as Robert announced me a second ago, I'm going to be a co-host in future episodes, starting with this one. And I'm really excited to have Kevin Kona with me from the SQL Server team. Hey, Kevin. Hi. Welcome to Toolbox. Thanks very much. We've, we've been working for a while together, and we've been talking about this video. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. we're, we're finally here. So what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, so today we're going to talk about using SQL Server data tools in Visual mm -hmm. Studio to make it easier to develop your applications that interact with databases. OK. And specifically SQL Server, right? I yes. mean, that's the scope. Um, I remember doing evangelism for these tools. You know, I'm, I'm familiar with them for a long time. And a question I'd often get is, does SQL Server data tools work with like Oracle mm -hmm. or MySQL or something else? Well, it's, it's for our product, right? Yes. So that's the first thing to say. Mm -hmm. And it's free, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think another thing we, we have to get for some skew of some Visual Studio thing, right? Yeah. This thing's available to everybody, right? That's right. It's 100% free. Yeah. Uh, it's built into Visual Studio ever since Visual Studio 2012. Mm -hmm. And with Visual Studio 2015, uh, obviously, we've added a lot of new uh, and Im improvements and features that, that work great there. Yeah, and you guys ship all the time, right? This is mm -hmm. something that's really a live project. We're not, yeah. we're not talking about something we ship for, for mm -hmm. developers like a long time ago or anything like that. This has been around for how many? Years. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been around a while, but it's now shipping monthly, not, not even every three months, but monthly updates. Um, so our current release, I'm actually going to show you what's coming out in about a week or so. Awesome. And, uh, and like that new feature added in, uh, I can point those out if you want. But, but every month, come back and check, and you'll see some new things. Yeah, and uh, it's, I had to look down. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's October 24th, so mm -hmm. a week from October 24th. Because mm -hmm. when publishing the video, folks might, might already have access to what you just That's right. Just so, so, so by the time this goes live, it should be up and running. Ready, release 16.5. Okay, awesome. Well, let's get into it. We've got a lot to cover, mm -hmm. and uh, why don't you kick us off? Great. Okay, so first, I just wanted to give some context, so a couple of quick slides here. And I want to talk to you about what a lot of people see when they're, uh, when they're used to developing, right? Which is, you, you do your application in source control, everything's well managed, but often in a real environment, the database development is, is kept separate. Sometimes it's a different team, a DBA manages it. And when they're doing that, it's often not checked into source control. Uh, usually they'll have a set that of... That never happens. Never happens. You never no, not check no. in something to source control. <laughs> Yeah, it never happens. Uh, often it, you end up developing directly against stage or sometimes even production. You, you make your changes right there. You yeah. hope and... Th there's like know. a data person on the mm -hmm. team, like a DBA or yeah. the database guy or mm -hmm. the staging server person. They often like, I mean, how many times have I had this in my career, right? They, mm -hmm. they manage the staging environment. If somebody needs to, to deploy some SQL, mm -hmm. they deploy it there. Yeah. You come in the next day, your stuff isn't, your code isn't working unless you yeah. get latest or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always been kind of messy, so this helps with that. Yeah, and it's hard then to track your changes, know when things are going to happen. Right. Um, it gets disconnected, so it slows down your development. There's a lot of issues with this. Um, and that's where, where you know, a lot of people are there today, and we want to move them away from that. Mm -hmm. um, there's some clear issues there. I mean, you don't know what's going to work against production. You might not be able to see all of the things that are in your database and see when things break. Because with application code, you compile. You get a lot of helpful information from that. S spoiled Visual Studio developers like <laughs> myself. We, we want to see all, all, all the things at build mm -hmm. time, right, as much as possible. It can be caught. And yeah. we like to have everything checked in, part of the solution. Mm -hmm. and get latest and start working mm -hmm. in the morning as a developer, right? Those, those are the things that most of us take, take for granted for everything else except often SQL, right? Yeah. SQL becomes that one thing, and th this is the solution for that. Yeah, that's right. And so, and so I wanted to, to go through what, what we think would be very useful for you and what, what uh, SQL Server Data Tools provides. So when you're looking for a better approach than this, what you want to look at for key features improving productivity are being source control friendly, just like your application, 
being a repeatable process. So multiple times you should be able to roll this out because right. that's really critical and, and most enterprises will want to have that kind of staging verification process. No, nothing like missing uh, uh, some column on a table mm -hmm. or having the wrong data type mm -hmm. just, just because you know, things weren't as organized in your project, right? Yeah, and especially uh, the deployment part is very important because it might be there in your local database, but if the script doesn't have it, then, then it's all missing and yeah. you're in trouble. Your staging might break mm -hmm. or eventually even worse, your project <coughs> break. Exactly. Yeah. Um, continuous integration and deployment is great. So whenever you check in, you should be able to run a deployment, make sure it all works, ideally run some tests against it and do all of that, that goodness as well, just like you would for your application. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason why that works is because SSDT, the, this tool, right, by, by having it installed in Visual Studio, brings T-SQL into your solution. It's a project mm -hmm. in your solution. It's part of it. And that's, that's one of the biggest things that we, we're trying to help folks mm -hmm. with. I think, um, you know, again, having that disconnect, having SQL be something else has always been a pain. Mm -hmm. But this is right there. That's right. That's right. And, and then one of the great things SQL Server Data Tools does is makes it very easy to find out about your code, fix errors, discover what's wrong, mm -hmm. which can be very difficult sometimes with SQL. Yeah. And, uh, and understanding the impact of your changes is another really good one. And uh, we're going to mention briefly alternatives to SQL Server Data Tools in the next slide. Things like uh, the understanding the impact of changes using Schema Compare, which we'll mm -hmm. show later, they're great for anybody who's developing with SQL, even if they don't use the SQL projects that we're going to show. Okay, awesome. Okay, so moving on, um, there are two main solutions. So one is the SQL projects that we're going to talk about. That's mm -hmm. where you have everything in T-SQL. It's source controlled and, and it's a project-based solution. The, a common alternative is a migration framework like Entity Framework Migrations. Mm -hmm. right. So you can use SQL Server Data Tools with Entity Framework. We're going to show that today. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Migrations Framework, what it does is it takes a set of changes. So for every time you want to update the data part of your application, you would write a new migration that goes from one state to the other. Mm -hmm. So that's a great technique to do similar things to SQL Server Data Tools. Clearly, I'm a little biased and think yeah. that uh, you should try at SQL you, Server you Data Tools. You don't work in the EFT. You yeah. <laughs> the SSD team. But, but they're both <laughs> valid paths, right? That's just, right. And complementary yeah. in, in many ways. Exactly. And if you're already using a migration framework approach, you may well want to stick with that, but use some of the complementary tools that we're providing. Yeah. I think, you know, as a baseline for SSDT, mm -hmm. what I always talk to customers, myself, I mean, I use SSDT for mm -hmm. my side projects. It's, it's the number one thing is T-SQL is right there with me. Mm -hmm. It deploys with me. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of my build process, part of my CI process. Other things, you know, how, how, you, how you get from T-SQL version mm -hmm. 1 to version 2 in some environment, mm -hmm. that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, and the other thing that we've seen with SQL projects that's great is oftentimes people start with very app-centric code, and as their, their applications scale up, grow bigger, they want to make it faster, more performant. They start putting a lot more logic into the database level. Yeah. That's where something like migrations... and yeah. improving you know, queries and everything else yeah. takes yeah. take some effort, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get the real benefits from SQL projects because you'll start to understand a lot more and make it a lot easier and more productive to develop your store procedures, your views, all of your programmability objects cool. there. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, so that's the, the background for why we want people to try out SQL Server Data Tools. Uh, awesome. We hope they will. Yeah. And, uh, and now we'd like to demo it, if yeah. that's possible. Let's jump in. We love okay. demos and, and toolbox. Great. OK, so I've actually taken an application that you uh, wrote a while back called yeah. health, healthclinic.biz. I, I can't take the full credit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wrote like 90 <laughs> No, <laughs> I did not write this application. Okay. Uh, my team did, though, mm -hmm. so that, that is correct. We, we wrote it back for Connect uh, mm -hmm. last year, the, the developer fall moment that we have. Um, and it's, it's available on GitHub, so you mm -hmm. just pulled down from GitHub and integrated That's right. into this. Yeah, so I, I pulled it down from GitHub. Cool. This is an ASP.NET application backed by Entity Framework right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and take that and start using an SSDT project to do the SQL part of that. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Let's go. So just briefly to show you what this does, it's got a, a login page over here. If you're a user, you'll get some information. And the important part that we'll take note of, <laughs> hopefully this works. Great, is you've got information about patients, about doctors, about all of these different concepts that are there. And uh, one of the, the, the long scenario that we're going to do here is mm -hmm. right now it only works for doctors, but if you can imagine this business is expanding, it becomes multidisciplinary and adds in physical therapists right. and other type of professionals. Time to change that database. Time to change that database up. <laughs> and this is a great time to come back to your app and, and start using SQL Server data tools for that part of it. I think a lot of developers will admit that this is the one time in the project mm -hmm. life cycle where you always get a little bit nervous. You're mm -hmm. like, changing code, that's easy. Oh, changing database. Mm -hmm. where's, where's my DBA? You know? <laughs> What scripts or who's using EF? What, mm -hmm. what project technology are we using here? Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is awesome. Okay, awesome. So, going into Visual Studio, 
This is set up into a number of different projects. The important ones here are the web front end, which we'll look at. And uh, if you look here, the one thing that we need to know from here is if we go to the app settings.json, uh, this is going against a local DB instance locally. So yep. you can obviously override this, but I created this uh, local DB instance just to keep things nice and separated. And there's a database there. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's worth saying for, for folks who are watching mm -hmm. this, SSDT works mm -hmm. with everything, right? Every yeah. version of SQL mm -hmm. Server we can think of, whether it's developer edition, mm -hmm. local DB, SQL mm -hmm. DB in the cloud, right? You guys yeah. don't, don't care. You work with SQL Server no matter where it's mm -hmm. running. That's right. And local DB is built in. It's installed with Visual Studio, so it's right there. We updated it in update 2 to support SQL Server 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've continued upgrading that, and uh, we'll, we'll keep shipping SQL Server data tools with the latest versions whenever they and come And how out. far back do you, does SSDT work with SQL Server 2000? 2005. 2005. So, so for the database projects, it's SQL Server 2005. Mm -hmm. There are business intelligence projects, uh, just to pitch that we've unified the installer right, for SQL Server one. data tools so that if you do have business intelligence, just uh, update SQL Server data tools from inside Visual Studio, you'll have the option to install those. Okay. And uh, they are also backwards compatible, 2008 and up for analysis and reporting services, mm -hmm. and 2012 and up for integration services. Cool. All right, awesome. Great. So the other part of this that's obviously interesting to us at the moment is the data project. So this I, I would have guessed Office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not quite. Not and I, I haven't explored the wonders of that, so, so I'm sure you have it, it it's in another It's a cool demo. We, we built yeah. a lot into it, but I'm glad we, we found the SQL piece for this demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so in here you can see that each uh, table has its own repository here. So this is a doctor's repository. Um, it's, it's done in the entity framework way. It's, it's lovely, plain old C-sharp objects. Mm -hmm. and, and it's got a, a whole bunch of information information there. Uh, but you know, for me, it is actually kind of hard to understand exactly how this maps to a database. So, so what I actually want to do is go and view the data part of this from, from a database and pull it into a project system. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to stop this demo app for the moment so that I can just get a little bit more source control. And if you haven't started with SQL Server at Data Tools before, one of the things is you might be using Server Explorer to connect straight to your databases. Uh, we'd recommend you use SQL Server Object Explorer here. Mm -hmm. So we power the, the functionality in Server Explorer. It's just a little more limited and doesn't have all the options. Right. The SQL Server there. Object Explorer is, is more specific to SQL mm -hmm. Server, has more functionality. Mm -hmm. You install SSDT, it's right there mm -hmm. in, your, in your view options. Might as well use it. Exactly. So going here. And you can see that I've already connected to this server, and the database is ready to go over here. It's been populated with some sample data as part of the app, which is all great. And, and I could right click here and create the new project, but since I just want to organize it correctly, I'm going to create a project first and pull in the schema of that database to understand what it looks like. Yeah, and this is already, we're talking about SSDT project, mm -hmm. right? So this yes. is a, a solution does not have SSDT project mm -hmm. in it, we're going to add one. That's right. Yeah, and there's so, two ways, right? You can mm -hmm. add it manually fr first mm -hmm. on the right side, or you can go from the left side to the right side. Exactly, cool. exactly. So let's do that, and if we just go to add a new project, we go and we'll get a SQL Server one here. I'm just going to make sure that this is under the source folder. And I will call this, um, to be consistent, myhealth.data.sql, since it's our SQL project. OK, so this has created a blank SQL project. Things to note when you create this for the first time, uh, if you open the properties, uh, you set a target platform here. So this is quite important. This is how we validate that all of the syntax and code that you're using will work. This is your build, work. build validation. Exactly. Yeah. So this is where build validation comes from. You can see all of the versions listed here. Uh, this is classic Azure SQL database. Obviously, with V12, huge new surface area, and that's the default. Uh, we'll, that will eventually go away. But for now, again, for compatibility reasons, yeah. we'll keep it in. Uh, but yes, uh, we're using SQL Server 2016 locally, so we'll leave it at that. And we're going to import uh, the schema data in. So if we just go import, you can import a bag of scripts if you have your code like that. If mm -hmm. in those scenarios you were, you were running and, and you had everything managed, um, it won't pull in alter scripts, just creates. And we'll go over that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And a DAC pack is just when you do a build, just like you get a DLL uh, out uh, for SQL projects, you get a DAC pack, which is just the, the mm -hmm. single file containing all of your schema information yeah. for you. And it's the thing you can hand mm -hmm. over in a scenario where mm -hmm. you don't have access to the production or mm -hmm. some Q&A environment. You can hand over the DAC pack. 
that team could deploy it and you, you can be sure that if they deploy the backpack, your SQL changes made it out to the environment. That's right, yes. Yeah. And that gets checked into, uh, that gets as part of the build. You can publish it, then you can pull down as part of a release flow. And we've actually got blogs and doing that for uh, Visual Studio Online, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I remember even a few years ago when I was still in the field uh, at Microsoft, I would run into customers that didn't know about that part mm -hmm. of it or the mm -hmm. tools. This is really powerful stuff. We could, mm -hmm. we could spend time just on that little, yeah. little thing, mm -hmm. but let's keep moving. Yeah. But for now, uh, yeah. just pulling in the database. So, so we want to pull in all of the data. So I'm just going to choose the connection. Uh, I have actually connected this before, so it's in my recent history. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I hadn't, if you go to the browse over here, and all of your local servers get helpfully listed. So I'm just going to go down and pick my health from there. Connect and start. Yes. So and there's a lot of options, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't have time to talk about all the import options, mm -hmm. all the build validation options, yes. things you, you can configure based on your mm -hmm. project needs. So folks shouldn't feel like we have some special need and, mm -hmm. and this thing won't work for me. Check it out. Maybe it will, right? Yeah. There's a huge amount of configuration. Obviously, we won't go into all of it today, but, yeah. but uh, pretty much everything is configurable or, or extensible. Cool. So what, what are we showing here? OK. So now that this is finished, uh, you'll notice that a folder has been added. And underneath it are all of our tables. So it is a simple application. It's just a set of tables right now. Uh, you can see, for example, we showed the doctor before. If you go in here, and I'll just minimize this to, to give this room. Yeah, real estate. Yeah, you can see uh, that uh, since it's a table, we have a very good designer. makes it very easy to make changes up here. And any changes are reflected in the SQL code. So yeah. if, if it's not in the designer, you can easily just type the SQL to make it all work, yeah, which is great. I, I remember like really kind of rediscovering this mm -hmm. for the first time in my side project that I was working mm -hmm. on, um, and and this was so awesome. Like I'm 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 seeing this and like oh man, I want I want to talk about all this cool stuff mm -hmm. in the editor mm -hmm. that we have. So maybe you you can describe some of the capabilities of this view because this view mm -hmm. itself is. Is worth a show, right? Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and even some people use SQL Server Management Studio. And if they love the table designer there, this is a, a, that on steroids. It's a, it's a better version. Cool. It's more modern. It's great. Um, all of the columns are listed one by one up here. You can change data types yeah. as you and need. And it's highlighting down here mm -hmm. the actual mm -hmm. SQL as you That's move That's right. There. It's moving in. You yeah. can check a lot of the settings. Uh, your keys, your indexes, your constraints are all shown up here. Again, clicking on it brings us right to the primary key down here, mm -hmm. which is great. And you can bootstrap adding in new keys, adding in uh, indexes, et cetera, right from here. Uh, one of the things yeah, people might powerful. not know is that the properties window down here also has configuration. Uh, we're not going to really go into that in detail today, but you can alter a lot of the settings right from there. So again, if you don't know T-SQL, this is a very comfortable, safe environment to kind of learn and develop, especially with yeah. the table needs. It, it works for all sorts of people's mm -hmm. you know, level of yeah. exposure to SQL Server. Yeah. And it does the validation for you mm -hmm. if you like break some T-SQL mm -hmm. down there mm -hmm. in editor. You can edit yeah. this, right? Yeah. So you can yeah, for take sure. away a comma. And yeah. Or, or a great one actually to show you is what happens if I reference something that doesn't exist? Right. Because that's, the, that's a great one. And it comes up red and tells you this foreign key has an unresolved reference. So it says, yeah. this thing doesn't exist. It's broken. Yeah. As and long as it's part of this project in, mm -hmm. in the solution, mm -hmm. This will find it. This will validate it. Yep, exactly. And awesome. just to show what happens uh, if you try and build this, which as we mentioned, building before, yeah. building will do all the validation that you'd expect. And now that there's an error here, it will say build failed, brings up the error list with this. If I double click, it brings me straight to where the error is, which is really great. Mm -hmm. Makes it very simple to fix things as you go. And what yeah. you'll usually find is if you're renaming things, if you're changing the structure, that will happen a lot. And you'll get errors or warnings in some cases that tell you, hey, there's a problem here. Mm -hmm. and T-SQL as a language is very tolerant. So if you do that on the database side, it'll happily change the table, break the view, break yeah. the stored procedure, and you'll never notice. Oh, if you've worked with SQL, you've been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's exactly. not a new scenario. So obviously, we'll want to uh, revert this back for now. And, and the other part to show is that since we know now, and let's just verify that this does build, yeah. uh, since it does build, we're going to check this into source control. So as we mentioned, the great thing then is you get all of your uh, history, all of your change log, all put in just like your application. And as you make changes, they can run in, in, in combination together. Yeah, awesome. OK, so let's go over to Team Explorer. And, and I've, seen, I've seen people use this in, in a way where they don't want the SQL building as part mm -hmm. of their project. And mm -hmm. that, that's fine. You can make a, a solution of your own mm -hmm. or some variant that doesn't include yeah. this, this thing. It's an optional, but, mm -hmm. but just having somebody manage this as part of their ALM life mm -hmm. cycle becomes very cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And often what will happen is one person is still the developer of one or two, and the mm -hmm. other people pull it down. And as part of their published script, they just have it publish the database for them. So they're 
always in sync with the database developers yeah. instead of having some special mechanism to catch up with. And by special mechanism, you mean that email you have to check in the yeah. morning with yeah. the SQL attached to it? Exactly. That has never happened. No. 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 <laughs> so we'll just create a new branch for this, obviously, and create it. And we're going to go into our changes here. And I'm just going to very quickly do initial project commit. OK, and commit all. Obviously, you can sync this up as usual to you know, Visual yeah. Studio Online and Source all the other sources. Of your choice. Yeah, exactly. So that's great. So that's building. And that's kind of step one, just to show you how that works. Mm -hmm. But it's not very useful unless you actually publish it somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. so, so the next thing I'd like to show is what happens when you try and publish to an existing database, just like the one we've already come from, and also to a brand new one. Because we were talking about having dev, stage, and production. Uh, the, the magic behind this is that uh, everything is, as you saw, create scripts. But when it comes time to publish, it will actually generate the correct alter statements to make it look the way it should. Right. So for the existing database, we should see very few changes, just maybe some settings where we had default settings uh, and we didn't pull those in. And for a brand new database, it'll just create it straight out. So how about I show you that? Yeah, let's do it. Great. OK. So if I choose to publish to my existing one, we'll just go here and go publish. Just like you publish, by the way, you know, your ASP.NET uh, websites. Yep. It's very similar. Yeah, very and similar. again, you just need to say, what's your target database? So since I already connected to it again, it's super quick. Uh, this is where I'll show you those huge amount of options <laughs> that you have. This is a scary button to click whenever it says advanced. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I went in here, yeah. it was a scary moment to be told. Yeah. I was like, oh boy. Yeah, That's database right development there. is complicated. Uh, yeah. the, the key things to look at here are, we will, by default, block you if you try and do a change that would cause data loss. So that's right. obviously your, your P0 scenario. The time that you would uncheck this are basically when you're just in your local environment and you're doing a huge amount of changes and just want to tear down, yeah. restart. Yeah, that's what I care. do in my, in my mm -hmm. local dev environment, right? I would mm -hmm. never want to do it. Like, be careful there. <laughs> Don't yeah, keep the yeah. setting <laughs> towards another deployment. That's right. That's right. Deployment. <laughs> uh, you, know, you can back up. You can do transactional uh, deployment if you want. Again, these are great options for when you're deploying to production. You don't really need them locally. Mm -hmm. um, one of the key ones is um, choosing what to drop or ignore. By default, we'll leave things in the database that aren't in your project. Just say there's a schema that somebody else is using. You don't want to touch it. We'll ignore it. But if you do want a little bit more control. Or you, or you want to punish your teammates or that's secretly right. deploying stuff that's not in here. That's true. You turn this on. <laughs> <laughs> you turn this on. So once you're comfortable with the process, yeah. everyone's on board, you'll turn this on. Um, but what you might want to do in those cases is uh, don't drop users, logins, or permissions, since those are often managed by your DBA. Yeah, yeah. And so Certain we've added that. Still, yeah. still should be separate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so for people who haven't looked at this in a while, that's something that we've added in the last uh, last year or two, is the ability to say not drop your users, tables, et cetera, which is, which is really powerful. Yeah. But for now, I'm just going to get out of this. And I always go and try and save, save my profile. So I'm just going to hit Create Profile here. And I'll generate the script to show you what would happen. So again, this is going against the existing database. You can see I was practicing beforehand yeah. with this. <laughs> I'll just clear this out so that it's not quite so busy. Yeah. Um, OK, so when we get this, first off, if you click the preview window, you get a very helpful thing showing what's happening. And in this case, as you'd expect, almost nothing's happening. We just pulled it back in. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. Yeah, you're so just comparing between mm -hmm. what's in T-SQL and mm -hmm. what's in the dev environment. And it's the exact same. Yeah. So here you go, and there's a little bit of bootstrap code here just to set some properties, as you can see. But really, I just always know to skip those. Once it starts with the actual database, it does nothing. Yeah. So it's, it's happy. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. It's all yeah. good. So what happens if we deploy to something that do, somewhere that doesn't exist already? So let's go publish. And this would be, for me, I often end up doing a little bit of database development before plugging it back into the application. So again, this is where I'd have my destructive, no don't worry about yeah. block on data loss, et cetera, one. Yeah. So go in here. And instead, I'm going to go to a different uh, local DB instance. I'll just go to this projects v13. That's built in, again, when we create a project, we have our own dedicated server just so that we don't interfere with ASP.NET applications, et cetera, that, mm -hmm. that might be expecting it on, uh, on usually MS SQL local DB. Yeah, makes sense. OK, so I am going to call this my health again and, and delete that. OK, I'll create this profile as well. And it, oh, I forgot to put Database that in. name. Yeah. My health, there we go. And I'll just save it. And again, I'll generate the script. 
And it, you can publish directly and we'll just uh, save the script for you. But uh, you know, oftentimes somebody wants to verify what's happening, so we're just showing that. So my, my behavior with this initially was that we kept generating scripts mm -hmm, and I kept mm -hmm. manually running them. Yeah. Uh, I got very comfortable very quickly, mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. especially for local dev, and mm -hmm. I just let this thing publish out. Yeah. It makes sense. And then mm -hmm. you can create the, the script and compare notes with somebody or send it over yeah. to show the changes you're about to pull, mm -hmm. push maybe to the you know shared environment or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, if you look at the preview here, you'll see that there's a huge amount of actions to create everything for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's going to create, and once we make changes later, we'll show you what happens. And, and it's worth saying, I mean, again, you, you said this in the beginning, mm -hmm. but I want to be clear kind of for, mm -hmm. for our audience, which is uh, there's just tables in this mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. example. Yeah. But this works with functions and users mm -hmm. and, and you know, views and what, whatever, yeah. right? And all, all the things in a database, all the database yeah. objects. Mm -hmm. There's no like database object that this thing wouldn't have pulled in. It's just that our, our example doesn't have a complex scenario. Exactly, exactly. Cool. So I'll just run this to publish it up to that database. OK, and by the way, what's interesting is we've got some warnings here on maximum key lengths, et cetera. So uh, we're not going to cover those, but uh, it's a sign sometimes maybe you want to redesign your app. And that's where having control at the database level can be, uh, can be really sure. good. Sure. I'm the only one from my team here. I'll <laughs> take it. We screwed this one up. I guess we should have hired a DBA. <laughs> there we go. No, no, no. The whole point of this tool is you, get to, you don't need to have your dedicated DBA quite as much anymore. They're free to deal with the complex stuff. You can yeah. do all of your day-to-day -day applications. Yeah. I, I I remember uh, the, it, my, um, one of the first companies mm -hmm. where I, I used an early version of this, mm -hmm. back before Microsoft even, right, uh, many years ago. And uh, the DBA actually like, started to love this. Mm -hmm. When I showed it them the first time, they were a little skeptical. They were used to SMS. Mm -hmm. you know, they, that's mm -hmm. how they did things. They would manually check, this and check things in the source control. Mm -hmm. It was really a, you know, a hectic process. Then um, I started showing him Visual Studio. The person never even used VS much in their mm -hmm. life. They used to be a developer like, you know, a long time ago. And they switched to almost using this as the primary tool because mm -hmm. it's just so powerful, even for a DBA. So it's not yeah. just a developer tool. In yeah, my view. yeah, it, it really helps. And once you get used to it, it can give huge power. A lot of DBAs, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they happily move over. And some, some have to be persuaded. But that's where you can either give them a script that you've generated as the handoff point, or you can give them the DAC pack and let them use uh, command line tools to deploy it that way, which is yeah, great. For, for me, it was actually interesting. It was actually the reverse scenario, mm -hmm. like from a mentality perspective. Mm -hmm. From a developer, you have to convince them that this this gives you the advantage of having T-SQL in your project, mm -hmm. and you can work as a team better, part of ALM, DevOps, mm -hmm. awesome, right? Developers need to be sold on that. From the other side, DBAs, if you show this to them, the, the, the selling point is not just everything I just mentioned, but the fact that they can often hit a five and mm -hmm. run the app that we developers run. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes DBAs don't have that capacity, right? They, they just don't do dev, dev day in, day out, mm -hmm. right? They just do T-SQL at a big organization. This allows them to actually have the local dev environment. They could test the T-SQL change the same way we as developers mm -hmm. could change it. They become even more part of the team. So I think this, this still benefits both sides mm -hmm. quite, quite well. That's right. But it doesn't, it doesn't force you. Like you can, you can have this just for one side of the fence, you could have it for nobody, you mm -hmm. know, if nobody wants to use it, but I think it works well in both yeah. you know, user types. It does. So how about now we've got everything working, yeah. we know how it's going, how about we make some changes to this? Yeah, thing? let's do it. Okay, so I think I mentioned to you, but uh, this is currently very focused on doctors and mm -hmm. what happens when you want to change that. So, so for me, I had to, had to think about this. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Yeah. Um, I decided that I really like having the simple table storing everything uh, for doctor here. But really, it's becoming healthcare provider rather than doctor. Okay. So I don't want to break the existing app. And so what I'm going to do is, is kind of stage it. So I'm going to change this and make it uh, be healthcare provider and, and, and change all of that. But I'll provide a view that's filtered to just the doctors. And so if anyone, yeah, everyone's familiar sense. with SQL, but it's just you view over a table, we'll just simple query to filter it down. Yeah, okay. we have to change behind. Mm -hmm. A view, therefore, we don't have to change our code right away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, they, they make, that's a really good suggestion in general. We should do a whole like T SQL, mm -hmm. you know, how to <laughs> how to dev with T SQL in this tool. But. And being honest, I, I'm not the best because, uh, as with many people who I primarily code C sharp, uh, my my T SQL skills are a lot worse than the people who'll be using this tool. So if I do mess up on the T SQL, please. Be, be considerate on that <laughs> yeah, part. I'm not. No uh, that's not my expertise. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is just add in a new column, which is going to be called provider type. 
And this is just going to be the name. I could use some uh, set of types here or an enum, but what I'm going to do instead is I'll, I'll just use a description. So it's going to be envarcar50, should be completely fine. Um, I'll allow nulls because, you know, for the existing ones, we're just going to assume anything yeah. that's null as a doctor. Um, and I'm going to be using this in queries. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an index on it because you want it to perform pretty well. This makes yeah. it super simple. So I'll just add a regular index. I'm going to put it on this provider type column. So I'll put that in here. And once I do that, um, it will come in here. And obviously, it's saying red because you know, it doesn't know which column I want to put it on. So I'll just type in provider type. OK, so, so this is going to be the thing that separates out doctors from physical therapists mm -hmm. in this example. Yeah. OK, so the other thing and, and, and something that's really great uh, that we can show is um, I want to rename this. So, so it's no longer right to call it a doctor. But I don't yeah. want to do anything complex. I don't want to lose my data uh, or anything like that. So I'm just going to use an, uh, a rename function in here. So just like your C-sharp projects, we have a couple of great refactorings. Mm -hmm. uh, rename is there, and it will actually do the rename while preserving all of your data, avoiding data motion. Um, you can move it to a specific schema. You can expand the wildcards, which I'll show you, or do fully qualified names, which is great if you've got some confusion over yeah. things. So I'll just rename here and call this healthcare provider. So this is, this is our continuation mm -hmm. of spoiling the SQL developer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. So once we do this, what's great is you actually get to see everywhere that's affected by that change. So you can see here that we already had an index on it. It's getting renamed now. Uh, the constraint that we had is getting renamed. And is there anywhere else? Just another constraint. So, so that's where all of the, the, the table is used. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to apply that. And those changes are added. There's also, by the way, a refactor log ex, uh, file down here. That's where these refactorings nice, are yeah. stored since databases are stateful. Uh, I'm also going to rename this doctor ID. Um, but first, I, I do want to make sure it's like, hey, what's the impact of this going to be? So I'm going to go, and one of the great things here, again, spoiling the developer, is that I can just find all of the references to this so I know whether it's safe or a crazy idea to do yeah, this. It, it's truly able to do that because, again, it's part of the mm -hmm. solution and understands the context mm -hmm. of the database in this. Yeah. And again, this has just got tables at the moment. But if you've got views and stored procedures in particular, yeah, being able look. to see exactly where in the stored procedure it's used, maybe then verify all of your parameters are correct yeah. is great. This is yeah, very, yeah. very useful. So, so here you go, and, and you get it, all the symbol results just like anything else. You can see here uh, that it's used in the clinic appointment and home appointment. And if I do look at that, uh, I will see here that it's actually a column here called doctor ID. So if I do want to uh, change the name on this, I'll probably end up changing it in a bunch of places, which, mm -hmm. which I'm going to do. So let's, um, let's change the name on this. So again, I'm just going to refactor, rename it. Yep, so refactor works at different mm -hmm. you know, levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can do it at the column level, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, so this is going to be a provider ID. OK, again, we get shown exactly where it's going to be affected. Uh, it does actually get effect, take effect in those things. So apply. And then because I saw those other ones were there, I'm going to refactor rename those as well. And just go in here, provider ID. OK, and I think there was one more. So let's just find all references again since I am very lazy sometimes. And here we go, this one. OK, perfect. And if I go in here, I'll just go. And that should be all of them. And so what's great about this is you see how quick it is to make all of these changes. Oh, yeah. And there's just a lot of, of fear when you're doing this against a live database. Or what usually happens is you try and make the first change. It errors out because of all those other references. You get that long list do. of errors, or, mm -hmm. or you run the app and it crashes, mm -hmm. which is a more realistic yeah, scenario if you yeah. don't even have this part of your solution. Exactly. Right? So the, the, the validation mm -hmm. that you're getting would, in fact, be much greater mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. without using Refactor, but Refactor is even mm -hmm. better. That's right. Yeah. Now, I will point out, though, the one thing that I didn't do here was update the code in the application to mm -hmm. handle this. So when we're creating our view, we're just going to have to make sure that we're still using that, that same thing. Yeah. So, so that, now that we've done that, I'm just going to build, because I, I am paranoid. And what's great is you get this very quick validation loop through that. It worked, all good, happy. So the Developers are paranoid because code is after us. Yes. It's not paranoia <laughs> when, when somebody's trying to break your build. <laughs> That's right. So, so I'm going to add in the view now so that for the application it should be transparent going back to it. So um, again, as you mentioned, all of the item, items really are there. So I'll just show you in new item just the wealth of things, programmability, security, 
all of the latest things. If we go to tables and views. And you, these are just templates, right? Mm -hmm. So just get you started quickly. Exactly. So basically everything in SQL that's scriptable. Mm -hmm. Everything and everything has a template. So you can see the new memory optimized table since 2014 oh, are yeah. there. Those are awesome. Great improvements, by the way, there. And temporal, which is proving really popular, which is uh, it stores a record of all of the changes to your data over time. Mm -hmm. So that's been super popular yeah. fe feature of I could have used this. that uh, you know, maybe five years ago. So. Yeah. You guys are catching up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's great. Uh, you should definitely try it out. Um, we want more features. <laughs> more features. <laughs> That's right. So I'm going to add this, and I'm going to call it uh, out of view though, and I'm going to call it doctor since that's what it is now representing. See, if you were on my team, I'd send you an email and be like, mm -hmm. you didn't put it in a folder called views. Come on. I know, I know. But um, yeah. for today, we're, we're going to be a little lazy on it. If so you'll lazy. Me. But, but it's worth showing that, mm -hmm. you know, in this aspect, like there's no enforcement of table mm -hmm. structure mm -hmm. or anything like that. This is purely yeah. for, like even when you're importing, right, you mm -hmm. can check different import options, create that's right. folders for tables or mm -hmm. other, other settings, more flat structure if you like. It's yeah, we, we've got a couple defaults there that, that tend to be what people like. Yeah. Uh, but and you I can like organize it any way you want yeah. after that. Yeah. So, so here, again, you've got the usual t IntelliSense uh, here. So if I just go healthcare provider, it comes in. Um, as, as I mentioned, I want to filter this down. So I'm just going to do a where clause. So it was provider type. Again, I love IntelliSense. Yeah. And I'm just going to assume it's doctor. But since all of the existing ones are there, uh, I'll also do provider type is null, and I'm going to assume that anything null is a doctor. We're, we're like blasting past mm -hmm. the IntelliSense of mm -hmm. this, but, but this is full IntelliSense that's smart enough to understand mm -hmm. the structure in which your, your database is, is created, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it knows that there's a table, it knows there's a column, yep. it'll know there's a view, a function, again, mm -hmm. all these different things we yep. could have had in this application. And that's how at build time it will validate. So if you try and do something where you're using the wrong data type, uh, we will flag that. We'll either give an error if it's going to break, or we'll flag it if 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 it's not. So those kind of really semantic, intelligent advisors are great to give you all of those errors. Mm -hmm. Um, in this case, the other thing is that we uh, wanted to uh, change it. So we don't want to break the app, so we need mm -hmm. to keep that original name the same. Yeah. So you can see here you get the list. Um, I'm too lazy to type those out. So I'm going to use another refactoring, which is expand to one, yeah, expand wildcards, nice. which is great. Uh, you can see it all comes out. And you can see provider ID is there. I'm just going to format this so it looks good. All right, good. folks out there in the universe, mm -hmm. raise your hand wherever you are if mm -hmm. you've typed this out manually. Yeah. That's me, that's me. So yeah. <laughs> we've, all, we've all cried. Yes. Yeah, we've so, done this. so this is great. And then all I need to do here is to keep it all together. I'm just going to bring this back to be Dr. ID. I will escape it, which is just a good practice. As you can see, we try to enforce that pretty heavily as well to avoid any strangeness. Mm -hmm. uh, and there we go. That, that's our view. Um, one thing I actually forgot to do before, so before I publish this, I'm going to want to validate this. So I'm just going to move some data across very quickly from the other server. So again, yeah. this can be hard, right, yeah. uh, to do? Can be, it's yeah. tricky. <laughs> Unless you have the right tool. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a lot of manual work. Exactly. So, so I just want to verify that this, this is going to work. Uh, before I make any changes is the best time, because um, once I've changed the structure, it can be a little hard. Yeah. And so. It, I mean, so, so there's a couple of things mm -hmm. to say here. First of all, a view needs data, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. to be to be functional in this particular case. So that makes sense. We need to bring the data over. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that all of this change that you're making here locally, you can go and see which tables you've modified, mm -hmm. which you know, files, the C-sharp files you've modified. You can see the change log. Mm -hmm. So this is still part of your, of your change set that you could decide even to undo if, if this goes really badly. Mm -hmm. And I've had this happen to be one time in my career mm -hmm. where I went down the rabbit hole of like, you know, six hours of changes. Mm -hmm. And I stopped myself and I said, what am I doing? This is, this is the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. And, and I undid checkout and everything, including T SQL, because yeah. we were using SSDT. And it was just so beautiful. I mean, I made a local copy, I'll admit, just in case I wanted to go back to yes. crazy. <laughs> but you, you have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. And if you had your SSMS window open and you were changing SQL somewhere, yeah. even if it's under source control, mm -hmm. it becomes this. Yeah, it this can be so state. hard to undo. You just yeah. don't know what you're doing. Whereas here, we've we've done all this, and and yet because we're offline, nothing's happened yet. We've gotten all yeah. the same validation we would have, but but it's all just ready to go. Full validation. Mm -hmm. You can see where your changes mm -hmm. are. You can decide to check it in. It's part of your work items association. Mm -hmm. All that is awesome. exactly. And when you are setting up and bootstrapping your test environment, you're usually going to have to pull over some data. Yeah. So I'll That's just show great. you very quickly. Schema compare. We'll hopefully get to, although we're running a little low on time. Yeah. Data compare. Uh, data compare. Uh, let's you compare the da two databases. Now, so th this is relatively new, right? Mm -hmm. This this has been. I mean, it's been around. Mm -hmm. And tell tell people more about this because yeah. I think this is one of the, the most hidden things in <laughs> SSDT. <laughs> it's a really cool feature. Yeah, um, it was. It's an interesting story. It, it 
uh, in the older, older versions, it was there. Then briefly, when we came out with uh, SQL Server data tools as its own offering, it, was, it wasn't there. But, but within a few months, we caught up. We, a we certain brought developer back. named Dimitri remembers that. Mm -hmm. And yes. he was like, come on, I actually needed it. It wasn't there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys had your reasons, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, there was a, it was just a, a lot of work, a lot of changes, and so it just took a, you know, we wanted to make sure that we got in for SQL, uh, Visual Studio 2012. You can't screw this up, right? Yeah. You can't screw up data compare. Exactly. You, you don't want people's data being wrong because Microsoft mm -hmm. did it. Right? Yeah, um, but it does let you to compare basically all different types of records. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to choose the target, which is that other uh, database uh, that I created in LocalDB here. Uh, that's the one, hopefully. Unless I, oh, well, the good news is I can always hit cancel, which is great. Yeah. And I will go and browse back to it on my uh, local DB instance and make sure that I have the right one. As, as far as like demos go on mm -hmm. Toolbox, I think you've done really well. Not too bad. <laughs> I think we've been, we're so, um, I jinxed it. Never mind. It's this okay. is going to go bad now. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, the good thing is we, we did change this up so that it doesn't freeze anymore, which is great. So it got to yeah. show that you can just cancel out of things very easily. Yeah, yeah it's always nice. <laughs> so now that we have that, the thing to point out is the tables do have to be the same. So they have to have the same. Uh, key uh, for comparison purposes. Okay. And, uh, and once you have that, you can list them. I'm going to compare everything, but if you have large, large tables that are, say, 100 gigabytes in size. Yeah, this could take a while. <laughs> yeah, so, so do be considerate of that. Uh, be considerate if you're comparing against Azure or another cloud uh, provider as well, that this is pulling it onto your own machine. So yeah. You know, if, if what data usage, ingress and ingress, yes, all that exactly. Yeah. So just be aware of that. Um, but obviously, locally, it's very quick to show it. And what you can see here is all of the, the differences. So if we click on this one, you can see that, as you'd expect, we didn't put any data in the new one. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a bunch of data in uh, yeah. the existing ones. So this is our mm -hmm. original database here in the source, yeah. and then the target is the new blank exactly. one we created, and that's yep. why it has no data. Exactly. And so what, what I want for, for my testing is just a couple of these. So I'm going to start unchecking some of them. And what I want, and I'll just make this a little smaller since the screen is bad, is um, I'm just going to do doctor. And I'm going to do the tenant ID, which I discovered earlier, is the thing that everything else refers to. Yeah, I was so. about to ask that question. <laughs> it probably needs all the, all the things it's mm -hmm. doctor is referencing. Yeah. So or the data can be inserted in a bad way. Exactly. So, so it, does, it does know to order the tenants first, but um, mm -hmm. it, will, it, won't, uh, un, it won't make it be checked. So that is something to be aware of. Yeah. But if I now update the target, and hopefully this will work, because I tried it earlier, great. Uh, if I hit refresh, what you'll see now is for the doctor, uh, all of the things are identical, which is great. Mm -hmm. And again, if you've made changes, it will just show you the changges. Yeah. And it's showing zero, not mm -hmm. because there's no records. It's mm -hmm. showing zero because there's no differences exactly. in the two. So exactly. source to target. And also, mm -hmm. uh, you could have generated a script here. Mm -hmm. right? So if you, again, yes. want to take that script-based mm -hmm. approach, or just you want to hit that button, look at the script, then mm -hmm. just hit update. It's something yeah. you can always do. Yeah, and it's great for reference data. If you want to have your scripts generated for you, once you've put some of it in, it can be a great way to just yeah, script yeah. out that reference data. Yeah, huge. OK, so, so we're done with data compare. Now we've got our data across. And I can actually start testing my view. So, so let's see what happens before I make my changes. So I'm going to make the changes to the database over here. I'll just hit refresh since we added it. Great. And now that we've got that in there, if I look at the doctor table, again, viewing data is very simple. It's super easy to edit this, which is really great. Uh, and you can see all of the data there. There's about eight rows worth of data. Mm -hmm. So yeah. hopefully, whatever we've done will make eight rows worth of data changes. So here is my publish for, I believe, LocalDB. Uh, you can rename those. Great. So I'm going to start trusting this, and I'm just going to hit the magic publish button. The magic button. Yes. So this does all the same steps. So you still have a preview to give you the high level summary. You still have the script, but it will just automatically publish it at the end and yep. tell you, hooray, it worked. Yeah, which one is great. thing that I remember myself like missing at first mm -hmm. was these blue links on the right mm -hmm. here. If you yeah. have, especially a very large, I have one of those large yes. uh, 30, 40 mm -hmm, displays, mm -hmm. a wide screen. This could be free far on the right. Yeah. Clicking on those, those mm -hmm. take you to the individual scripts mm -hmm. and such. But again, they are great, especially the preview I like because I don't have to figure out the SQL. I just get a very short summary of yeah, what's happening. Yeah, that makes sense. And again, if you look at what happened there, by the way, actually, we should go into that briefly. Um, we renamed these four things. Yeah. We altered the table, and we created the new things. And it did it all in the right order. If there's anything complex, it will say drop constraints, do all of the things it needs. Um, but in this case, if I just use a script, it's pretty clean script, which is great. We're usually pretty smart about these things, so we rename the doctor. Rename it uh, per doctor ID to provider ID. 
Uh, so a bunch of just very simple renames. And that's something SQL Server supports that will just change it without any data movement or anything. Yeah, and it, it's a very great. verbose script file mm -hmm, that it generates. Mm -hmm. It does all the print yes. statements. So as it's running exactly. in SSMS, let's mm -hmm, say, let's mm -hmm. say you give it over to your DBA or whatever, your teammate, mm -hmm. they can see what's going on. Yeah. I really love how, how this mm -hmm. tool does it. Yeah, and it's smart enough to just alter the table after that, create an index on that, then create the view, and it does it all in the right order, which is really great. Uh, this bit at the end is just uh, the refactor log, so that it traces the steps. So if mm -hmm. you try and apply it again, it knows that you've done all of these renames. Great. So that was awesome. And now I'm just going to test things. So uh, I wrote this, and hopefully it will work. So we can now view, if I just refresh this, uh, I should see that my doctor has gone away, and healthcare provider is, is here nice. instead. So I'll just view the data on that. As you can see, it still has all of the data. Yeah. Um, but what's funny is this one, hopefully this will work. Um, if I hit refresh on this, oh, no, it's not happy with that because it was a table. In that yeah, because it's doctor that's yeah, trying to pull yeah. out. But if I go down to the views, uh, yeah. views are also editable the same way, which is great. And, uh, and, and that I can was see actually here. a good error because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't assume that just, be mm -hmm. just because you have something named the same, yeah. that it's the same thing mm -hmm. and it's a valid scenario. It's like, look, mm -hmm. there's no more doctor table. Yes. Go bring a view version of this up. Exactly. Yeah. And so now I'm just going to start muddling with this data a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure what I would do is make one of these a doctor and make sure it still works. Once I tab off of the row, it will just automatically commit it up. Mm -hmm. So that should still work. Um, but now if I change one of these so that they're no longer a doctor, but instead a physical therapist, what I'm hoping for it's is, <laughs> yes, we'll see how close it is. Uh, yeah, we can fix that up later. Um, if I go over here and I hit refresh, you'll see that it's missing uh, row seven. Yeah, now. because it doesn't meet, meet mm -hmm. the view criteria, right? Exactly. So, so, so what's great about this then is that everything else is the same. My application will continue. But now I can add a new page that's very simple based on the uh, other healthcare provider type. And I can expand my app out. I'll, I'll check this in now and, uh, and, and go from there. And I've just one last feature to very mm -hmm. quickly show, yeah. uh, which, is, uh, which is schema compare. So, so as with everything, you can see your history over here, mm -hmm. all of the objects that yep. we have. So I'll just say refactored to support. Again, spelling <laughs> is fun when you're typing live. Uh, if, if I was graded on spelling uh, for, mm -hmm. for my job, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we all have things we're good at. But. Yeah. So I'll just close these down. And then there's just one last thing uh, which we, we mentioned would be useful for everybody. So this has been really powerful. And you can see how this all works. Um, if you're using Entity Framework, you just need to not do the auto migrations and instead uh, have part of your script be that you, when you're publishing, just publish this beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, I think this tool has mm -hmm. like various use cases, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. can use it just to kind of do a sanity check mm -hmm. from one environment to the next, from one yeah. local database to the next. Mm -hmm. You can use it to replace migrations. You can use it in some instances mm -hmm. where something went wrong. You know, there's all sorts of, I think, yeah. awesome use cases. That's it. And, and so the last one then is, is when you do want to be able to understand things and, and see what's changed, one really powerful thing is schema compare. Yeah. So you get your history through Git or through TFS integration. You get that great history file by file. But yeah. what you don't know is how does that compare to the real database? Yeah. And here you've right clicked mm -hmm. on, your, on your data project. Yes, so your SSDG project. project now mm -hmm. has these various right. SQL related options. That's right. And so schema compare. Uh, we'll let you compare the, uh, your project to any database, to databases, to mm -hmm. each other, or even those DAC packs yeah, we mentioned. The DAC packs are that, really cool. uh, that you know, so if somebody gives you a random DAC pack, you can you can actually use this as a DBA to actually um, verify what's going on and understand all of the changes that are going to happen in a yeah. very simple, intuitive way. Yeah, and, and I've done this in real life. Like I, again, my own development. Like I'm just one guy working mm -hmm. on a solution, mm -hmm. so I keep all my DAC packs from every deployment. And I, I just did it that way. At yeah. the time, I wasn't using EF migrations. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had an issue. And I had to like, compare back to a previous mm -hmm. deployment mm -hmm. I did. And I found out what my issue was like so quickly. Otherwise, I'd be sitting there mm -hmm. like, what changes do I have? Imagine it's not even source control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. You yes. know, or it's a zip file somewhere on some SharePoint site. Mm -hmm. You have you ever had that? Like I, I have, and actually, <laughs> I'll just show you. So I'm just going to choose this database first, yeah. and and I'm going to go up to my original database over here on ASP.NET, um, and hit OK. I'll actually show you one just quick t tip and technique for how to to make that handy. If you do want to reference a couple, like say, hey, here was my original or major impactful changes to look back, mm -hmm. uh, you can very quickly go and uh, where is this hidden? There should be snapshot. So snapshot will just create a DAC pack 
which is the backup at this point in time yeah. for you. You can then that have that checked in, and that's great if you want to bootstrap it for these kind of comparisons. So if you're yeah, and it's based on mm -hmm. your project, right? based so on my project, because you yes. created here, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. also create the same snapshots of a database in some yes. environment. And mm -hmm. I've had that in reverse, where um, again, like man, I've worked so much with this tool. I forget how much I worked mm -hmm. with SSDT. Mm -hmm. There was a scenario where the production environment was having an issue. I got a snapshot from the DBA. Mm -hmm. I didn't have access to that yeah. environment. I compared it, and right away I saw something was missing from the deployment script. For some reason, like it was didn't make sense, but sometimes you just got to fix the issue first, yes, and then keep going, right? Exactly. Yeah. No. So it's really great. It will work against pretty much any database you have. If you just want to quickly like that, get it out uh, in a in a pretty secure way. Yeah. It's small. It's simple. Awesome. Um, so th so that's snapshots. Uh, bonus feature for people since I hadn't planned to show that. Yeah. Uh, and now when we do schema compare, uh, the first thing I'll say is I really hope that this uh, looks good because on my machine is the only one that sometimes doesn't show this uh, by default, but it was friendly to me and decided to be nice, which is great. Okay. So this shows all of the changes that have happened. So you can see here uh, that this has changed the provider ID, the constraint, just a uh, regular you know, diff viewer here. So you can yeah. see exactly what's changed. See, the, the darker color is where uh, something is, is different uh, mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you can see that these have been altered, uh, you know, altered again here with slightly more changes. And this one here again. And again, it's, it's smart enough to know it was healthcare providers, now doctor. Yeah. And finally, on the view, this is a brand new view, so it's yeah, just the icon there. indicating mm -hmm. here, like we have a plus mm -hmm. that shows mm -hmm. that this is new. new. We have a little edit, like yes. pen. Change. Uh, yeah. One, one day mm -hmm. we need to make that a computer or a keyboard. As <laughs> <laughs> so people forget what pens are eventually. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> the other cool thing is that update button, right? The yes. fact you can change or mm -hmm. fix the issue if there's. Yeah, one. and so you can update it if the target is a project or a database. You can directly update it. Mm -hmm. As with everything, you'll start noticing there's always a script button there. So if you're worried, uh, it's always there. And, and again, uh, there are a huge amount of options, again, for this pretty much very similar options. Yeah. Um, oh, the one part that I would like to show as well is what happens if you try and uh, disable something? So if I try and undo this, uh, it will get unchecked. And so different ones like yeah. this and this. Well, this, so this is great. So I, I've this used this when mm -hmm. I find a change, but I, that's not mm -hmm. the change I want to push. Like maybe. I'm in the middle of two things, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and the one thing that's keeping me from moving forward mm -hmm. in some test environment, I just uncheck the thing that I'm going to fix yeah. later or it's not breaking. Mm -hmm. So custom, uh, empowering the user, right? That's yes. what we're trying to do here. Yeah. So, cool. so that's it. And that's really uh, the high level tour of, of most of the features. Um, just a, a couple things that this is, you know, a small part of what this does. Yeah, it's very got small. Uh, database unit testing, the ability to add in advanced static code analysis rules, some of which, uh, which is extensible. So you can pull in, if you've got your own set of business rules, you can embed them as logic into your project so that whenever you build, you'll get flagged if you've got naming issues, et cetera, nice. uh, among you know, many other things here. So, so do check it out. And, and, the, and also, if you are still a SQL Server Management Studio user, uh, also realize that the latest version of that is out as well. It's, yeah. It shifts works monthly against, also, shifts right? monthly also yeah. works against, again, older versions of SQL Server all the way back really well. And, and so you know, the SQL tools are thriving, well worth a, a look, and, and this will hopefully help you in your day-to-day -day development. All right. Well, Kevin, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being on Toolbox, yeah. and thank you for everybody who watched it. I hope you find SSDT useful. We'll pu put some links to the tools, mm -hmm. to the example we showed, mm -hmm. to anything that was relevant. We'll get all, all up there, and uh, you know, we'll have you back on. There's a lot more to talk about. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. Thank you.